Um, okay, so uh, today we're going to talk to a, a maybe something that probably caused some frustration in people that were too enthusiastic uh, with respect to collective intelligence at the beginning. That is, well, although collective intelligence is something that can benefit from the from the efforts of crowds. And that means that those who planned the, the projects, let's say, have to do a, a, a lot less effort themselves because they involve others, and others will work either because uh, they enjoy it, uh, sometimes because they have some uh, little money uh, compensation, other times because they uh, simply feel honored to be part of the, the group or whatever. We, we've already discussed some of the motivations for, for collective intelligence and, uh, and also for crowdsourcing as one of the means by which collective intelligence can be harnessed. Uh, what we had not discussed yet is the fact that maybe there will be people that will uh, have reasons to play against the collective intelligence effort. Right? Uh, maybe when we were thinking about you know, doing, doing good or, or you know, doing something that is, that is allegedly good for everyone, also now I have one student in the class. I was, I was telling them that uh, today maybe I was going to be here on my own. Uh, because two of the three guys that usually come uh, had told me that they wouldn't be around. So now, now there is a, uh, uh, a maybe if you, if you can sit uh, over here so that I so that I look a little a little more straight to, to, to you and the camera at the same time. All right. Um, so uh, in general, we, we could think that uh, something that is going to be good for everyone will never have anyone against it. Uh, but I have to tell you, there is nothing that is going to be good for everyone. There's always someone hidden in the crowds that will feel that they, they are, they're missing something when others are gaining, right? Um, or, or there could be that, that situation. Uh, and mainly, of course, when we're talking about crowds, uh, fun, uh, sorry, crowdsourcing uh, as one of the types of collective intelligence projects that we have, crowdsourcing in general, uh, I, I keep telling you that we do not have very, very strong definitions that separate the different types of uh, uh, collective intelligence. But in general, when we think of crowdsourcing, we're thinking about someone has an idea, someone has a goal, a project. Uh, this person or this group, usually a small group or a company, uh, are interested in, in pushing that project ahead. They want to do that with uh, uh, the, the, the least um, effort involvement as possible from themselves. So they try to engage others, right? But notice that they're trying to engage others in a project from which they will benefit, or at least they will benefit the most. Uh, so it's not a project that is uh, for, the, for the good of everyone uh, in general. Crowdsourcing has someone who will benefit at the end, and it's not usually the crowd. So the crowd needs to be compensated somehow so that it keeps motivated and, and so that there is some alignment in the objectives of the crowds, even if they are short-term uh, 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 objectives that are shared, and the, the, let's say the long-term uh, interests of those who are promoting uh, the, the, the collective, uh, in this case, the crowdsourcing project. Uh, so, uh, so for, for, for crowdsourcing specifically, there may be people that may not be interested in participating. So, motiv motivation is always uh, an issue here. But there's also we, are, we have, have also to think that many times crowdsourcing involves establishing or setting a competition among the potential um, uh, well, 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 those who will perform the effort and. Uh, and some of them will gain or lose something, mainly some of them will probably gain, win a prize or, or win money or win recognition because they do better in, in supporting that project. And others will be left aside. So of course, whenever we have a competition, there may be reasons for some of the competitors to cheat, right? To try and, and, and sabotage other competitors. It, it, it's not, let's say, it, maybe, maybe we could consider that it's not um, a fair play, uh, but we know that humans are not necessarily fair players uh, all the time. We shouldn't be naive about that. And besides, uh, there are situations in which cheating or, 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 or trying the robustness of uh, some collective intelligence effort may also be part of the, of, 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 let's say, of the, the whole thing, right? So the first paper that we will be discussing today, and by the way, uh, I, I included here uh, the, the papers for today. The two, two first ones are not. Uh, this one, Harris, 2015, and Harper, 2015. Uh, the first one is How a Lone Hacker Shredded the Myth of Crowdsourcing. This is not an academic paper. 
This was written, uh, I, I don't know if the author is academic, but it doesn't seem he writes more like a journalist, someone who's interested in crowdsourcing or, or he was interested in, uh, on the theme, but is not necessarily an expert on it. Uh, and then we have uh, an answer, a response to that paper by Harper, uh, which was published right after, in which uh, Harper tries to say that some of the, uh, the ideas or the concepts discussed here by Harris in the first one uh, may not be well, it's not that he say it may not be right, but he's, he's sort of telling, well, there is, there is hope for, for crowdsourcing. And of course, this, this guy here, Harper, also has a lot of uh, credit. He's, he's not, uh, again, an academician, but he has been the uh, CIO, I think it was a CIO, it's a CIO at uh, Threadless. CTO. CTO. Well, that, so the, the chief technology officer. But anyway, the chief technology officer for for for... For Threadless, that is that, that company that made T-shirts with uh, crowds, crowdsourcing the, the, the design of the, the T-shirts, uh, stamps, the T-shirts, uh, let's say drawings and, and the silk screen to, to, its, uh, to its customers. Uh, this guy is, a, is, a, is the, 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 the computer, computer guy at the, the company and he, was, he gives us some, some hints about, um, about why he thinks that uh, the situation is not as bad as one could think after only reading uh, how a lone hacker shredded the myth of crowdsourcing the first paper of today. You, you, you've probably noticed that I just included this morning when I was rereading the papers uh, uh, before class here. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, in, in, I mean, pretty soon I had even said, well, I have to check this paper by Stanovich and Ali, which I have to admit I did not have time to get to it, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to read it. But it's a paper that is mentioned here in the Harris uh, paper, uh, and it's a paper in which um, uh, the, the guy who finally found out who the, let's say, the sabotager was for, for the, 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 the crowdsourcing projects described by Harris here, uh, he described who he was and he actually had an interview with this guy and to try and, and understand his reasons and motivations. Uh, and then, they, well, th this is a technical paper because, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 the guy who, who Harris uh, told us about this uh, paper here, but this paper is the paper that was written uh, uh, afterwards. Um, uh, the, the data scientist that managed to record, uh, analyze the data. To analyze the data years after, right? Years, 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 years after, well, two years after uh, the. So I don't know. It seems that you already had a, a chance of browsing through it. Uh, that's the idea. I haven't read it, so we, we're not going to discuss it here. But I decided to include it so that uh, you can have a look at it afterwards. It's more of a data science paper than... It is, yeah. It's, 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 yeah it's, uh, I can assure you that it's, 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 it's data science here, it's not collective intelligence. In fact, this is the reason why probably uh, the, well, one of the authors here, together with uh, uh, Stefanovic, is that... Uh, let me see, Sibrian, Cibri I don't know if it's Sibrian, Sibrian, or whatever. The, the, the guy who was ahead of the, 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 pro the DARPA projects discussed in the first paper, but he was a... He was a, a collective intelligence uh, researcher. Uh, in fact, he was uh, a, a, exactly, he had a, a situation like mine here. He's, he's dealing with technology, but he's, a socio, so the, he's involved in social computing. Uh, and, this, and, and, and of course, collective intelligence is very important for social computing because social thinking of humans as a social, uh, um, so, so social, um, I would say, creatures. Uh, we're never going to, to talk about social computing uh, and discussing uh, automated uh, artificial intelligence, for example. Uh, okay. uh, so we had those, well, very quickly, before, before we get into the, into, into so, so we're going to discuss Harris, we're going to discuss Harper's answer or response to, to Harris. Uh, then I had already, I had also included here uh, a way in which a, a teenager just disrupted thousands of uh, scientific uh, uh, studies, not because she was sabotaging on purpose simply because she, she found it a way a cheap way of getting a few a few bucks a few few dollars for filling in surveys and then she told other other teenagers how to do that and they started answering surveys again you're giving the wrong motivation uh, scientists never thought that uh, the, the the money compensation that uh, they were giving would make someone get out of their line and, and, and answer questionnaires about things that they, they were not uh, involved with but it happened there. So sabotage doesn't always happen because uh, uh, we, uh, because people intend uh, to do evil to our projects. Many times it's simply because we, our mo the motivation factors that we included there, are, are misaligned with the interests of, of the project. Right? Uh, I had included here also 
this uh, master thesis by Abhinav here, uh, Truthworthiness uh, in Crowdsourcing. We will not have time to deal with it uh, today, but I include it here because many of you are involved in writing your own um, uh, projects for, 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 for a master's uh, thesis or, or a, 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 a doctoral dissertation, uh, and it's always good to have other examples. Uh, in fact, I did not bring Abhinav here because of the format of its uh, work, uh, which seems fine, but uh, of course each university has its own standards and, and many times, I think at most universities when, when we have sort of a template for a dissertation or a thesis, it sort of resembles that of, a, uh, of an academic paper, right? Uh, we have the same sorts of sessions in which we, an introduc introduction where we explain the problem and then we have a, a, a literature review session or a, or a session where we have uh, our, the authors that we used as a reference to talk to one another, let's say, and, and to let's say, debate the topic before we get into our practical field uh, experiment, whatever it is, or I shouldn't call it experiment, but experiment is just one of the possibilities that we have, but we, we can have several different methodologies used, and then we, we present the results, uh, and then we have a, a conclusion. Uh, you will see that Abhinav's uh, work sort of goes that way, but it shouldn't be taken as a template for you, but it's again, it's a, someone who's, who has written uh, a work on, on collective intelligence for a, a master's uh, degree. Uh, and then uh, we'll talk uh, briefly about uh, this uh, paquet uh, uh, paper here. This is again, this is an academic paper. Uh, paquet is discussing sabotage and bricolage in, uh, well, in, in the interaction between uh, governments and, and citizens. Uh, it's, it's a little specific to, to Canada, uh, because of course it's a Canadian author and he's talking about uh, how things happen in, in Canada, but it gives us uh, some ideas of how we can explore collective intelligence for uh, e-government government, uh, in that way of trying to include people uh, and, and also try to avoid that uh, some groups uh, become too powerful in silencing others. So this author has some, uh, you know, uh, there are some ideas of, of, of someone my age, for example, that are many times are not uh, so uh, easily understood by, by younger people. Uh, and uh, and I, I don't want to insist on them because I may, I mean, we all may be wrong in, in, with respect to our ideas, but I also have some of the same feelings that Packhead shows here of sometimes saying, look, when we are, we are too interested in, in reinforcing the politically correct, we avoid the possibility of debating issues that have not been absolutely pacified, right? Not, that not everyone thinks exactly the same way, uh, but the politically correct uh, yeah, imposition of ideas uh, silences uh, others uh, and, and silences in a way that is probably not going to lead to, to a democratic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in, uh, coexistence in the future. Because, and, and, many, and, 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 and I read what happens uh, recently with these extreme right movements around the world right, uh, as being a reaction in part, again, I'm not a sociologist, I, I do not study that, it's just the impression of a citizen here. I sometimes feel that, why did we get, we got, we got so, we, we as a, a, a society got so extreme in our beliefs, right? Uh, and I, 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 I personally believe that our uh, imposition of the politi politically correct without allowing people to express their feelings, debating feelings, and accommodating somewhere in the middle of the way, in many cases, uh, has created the possibilities for, uh, the, for what happened in the social networks afterwards. Of course, if, the, if, if these people cannot discuss that in the larger group of, our, of the larger society, they will find smaller groups in which they are accepted and where maybe that's the only truth that they find. So I'm not here going against uh, the politically correct. I think we, it's, it's important that we, we all try to have the fairest, the more uh, yeah, equalitarian, equalitarian in the sense of providing people with opportunities. We are not equal, we don't want to be equal, right? This is probably the reason why uh, communism uh, uh, failed so severely. And you know, uh, a society that makes everyone equal uh, is, 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 seems to be even less motivating to people than a society that creates all the differences that our societies, so, 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 societies create and, and that we have to uh, somehow um, go against in the sense of re-including those uh, who, who were uh, somehow left behind. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll get to, to Paquet and talk to some of his ideas. I don't know if they were, uh, if they are disturbing or not to you. Basically, what he's trying to, to, to say there is, if we want to have, uh, if we want people to, if we, if we want to have governance in the sense of uh, 
involving uh, everyone, giving uh, opportunities to, to everyone and, and accommodating different uh, ideas, uh, it is probably going to be sort of a bricolage problem and we'll have to accept uh, sabotage, at least to some extent, uh, and, and sabotage in the political sense as being, uh, 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 um, I would say, a, a, a reasonable way of uh, presenting one's uh, ideas. To the same extent, uh, or, or a little similar to what happens in Harris, when they find out that the guy that was sabotaging was not sabotaging simply because he wanted his team to win. In fact, in fact he had no intention of winning. He was, he was actually part of another team, but uh, he was just annoyed with the fact that he thought that the problem that DARPA had, uh, had uh, proposed was a problem to be solved with pure computer science. And uh, he thought that involving people and, and, and involving people the way crowdsourcing does was cheating. And he, he thought that it actually it was cheating in the sense that he was not promoting the possibility of, uh, of another area, or of an area of, of computer science that was still not so uh, developed at the moment that it could develop further. So he had, you know, he, yeah. he had his, his rights, right? He had his rights. Yeah. He, he made a point that he uh, thought it was really valid because of, uh, since it's a, uh, I don't know if it was NASA or CIA. Uh, uh, it's da, uh, the, that's da, uh, what's the, the second DACA? It's a, uh, the organization. Yeah, it's, it's a, 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 a government. Of, uh, yeah, it's, it's a military of, uh, da, I think it's DACA, no, it's DA, it's DA something, don't recall. It's, it's uh, yeah, I don't remember. But it's a, uh, it's a I DARPA had the name DARPA. in my mind right now, it was DARPA. 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 Uh, so it's a government agency of the USA, and he has a good point of, of considering that, well, if that, that's something the recent interest of the government, someone that it's against the government will try to attack. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, how do we, we, we build systems that are resistant, resilient, mm -hmm. or robust to external attacks? So I think going back to, 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 to Paquet's uh, paper, the idea is you shouldn't, maybe you shouldn't only think of preventing again, uh, someone to go against your idea, because first of all, who tells your idea was that brilliant? You know? One of the things about collective intelligence, of course, crowdsourcing has this characteristic. Someone has already thought of the problem, someone wants or needs that problem solved, and uh, uh, this person or this group will try to motivate others to do the hard work, right? Uh, the hard work that they want. Uh, it, it may not be the, the, the work that other people want, and, and that's a source of, uh, of a potential sabotage, but it's, it's, it could be sabotage by people that are not, you know, and most times that are not criminals, that are not doing something uh, necessarily wrong, they simply do not agree with you. And I would say that even in crowdsourcing projects, it would be good if you could sense that level of resistance and, 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 and try to understand it because, uh, I mean, most uh, projects, they are not made with the intention to harm anyone and if, if, if anyone is feeling harmed, why not to try and find a way of including also? I know it's obtaining something that is consensual is always very difficult um, and, uh, well, democracy is difficult to reach, uh, but democracy is reached when we, we think of uh, not only the rights of others, but also the, the duties of others and ourselves, and, and, and we try to accommodate things considering that we'll have to live together, in spite of maybe having different values in life. Okay? But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get to discuss that a little further. And then I included here also a, a video by, it's, it's, a, it's a, a researcher from uh, the University of Pennsylvania who, who, who discusses uh, some problems related to group thinking when we are trying to use the wisdom of crowds. Uh, and he says, well, the use wisdom of crowds works well the way it was proposed when there is no, let's say, influence uh, of, uh, of an individual on, on another so that each one has their own biases and those biases are cancelled out. Uh, it works, he claims, uh, the, the, the research that he did says that he claims it, it works even better when you provide people with, after they have, let's say, voted on something, after they have given their estimate on a, on a figure, on a value, uh, if you provide them uh, with, uh, with, with some feedback about what others or everyone else uh, did, they may that, that may help calibrating uh, uh, each person's own assessment. And in fact, they say that it improves their assessment, right? So let's say you have a thousand people uh, guessing the amount of uh, uh, jelly beans on a jar, uh, the wisdom of crowds most famous, uh, let's say, uh, example. Uh, and then uh, after they do that, you provide people with, look, the, 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 the average or the, the mean that we obtained for this, uh, from, from, from this group was uh, 750 uh, uh, jelly beans. Do you still 
think that uh, it's only 30, or do you want to adjust your, your let's say, your, your assessment, right? And, and they realized that when they, they provided people with, the, the, with information about the group uh, thought, people adjusted, uh, in general, they, they, they improved the quality of their own, um, own decision if they, they had the opportunity to, to decide a second time. However, uh, if they decided to include someone as a specialist and said, well, you, you, you have chosen, you have said that uh, the figure here was 700, uh, we have here this NASA expert that said that it's 200. Do you want to change your mind? People would get closer to whatever the specialist said, regardless of the specialist being uh, or, or knowing more than the, the person did. So there is a huge chance of losing the benefits of collective intelligence when you start including mediators there, or like, like this uh, specialist, or, or which could be simply um, uh, nodes in a, in a network that are better connected than others. Right? So watch the video later, it's a three, four minute, minute video. It's probably, I took longer to explain than, than they did, uh, and they, they surely do it much better. Uh, and then I, I also included here, we're not going to discuss uh, uh, this uh, much because I'm sure we lack time, but anyway, uh, I, I included a few uh, other videos here. One of them by Umberto Eco in 2015, when uh, he, well, it's in Italian, uh, so there is some I think we, we could get some, trans some uh, translation to, to English there, but I think it was poor. But anyway, uh, the, the problem there was, well, uh, Echo was complaining about the fact that the Internet had brought to scene a legion of imbeciles. Uh, it doesn't sound very polite, probably not even very politically correct, mm -hmm. but it just, uh, what he was saying is, look, when someone is an idiot and, and, and that person has the feeling that he or she is an, an idiot, he or she tends to be quiet in, in let's say, in, in, in the crowds. Uh, but when we give this person the opportunity of finding out that th there are many other idiots around, uh, then it becomes a revolution of the idiots. Uh, it may explain against some of the, the problems we have with our um, uh, social networks, bubbles in which we see all crazy sorts of discussions, and we see, how can this guy be thinking uh, that way? And it's basically because they only talk to other people that think exactly the same uh, way they do, and that keeps providing them with reinforcement incentives. Right? And here I'm talking about uh, all sides of the polit political spectrum, but not, that doesn't happen only with politics. I think politics have been a huge problem around the world more recently in terms of, of uh, collective uh, imbeciality, imbecility uh, uh, or collective stupidity, as I, I sometimes refer to it. Uh, but it happens in, in, in other fields as well. It happens, it truly happens in religion. It happens uh, in, uh, in, well, in anything that is relevant enough to people so that they want to join forces with other people that think the same way as they do. Uh, then I, I apologize for those of you who do not speak uh, Portuguese. I know that we have some Spanish speaking uh, participants in this class and, and also well, a German English speaker. Uh, you will not be able to, to maybe uh, uh, understand what well, Karnal is a Brazilian, uh, I think he's a philosopher, but he's a sort of a influence, influencer, a net, uh, an internet influencer, but with, uh, with, with uh, some academic uh, background, uh, says ref his reflections on what uh, Umberto Eco said. Uh, I have here some repercussions uh, of that in the press, uh, and of course, uh, some of it was uh, very hostile to to, to Umberto Eco, because that, they claimed that he was being intolerant. And, but in fact, he was saying, well, in, in Brazil, we also have, um, uh, I forgot his name now, so I can't, I can't quote the guy. It was uh, one of, it was a, a, a Brazilian um, reporter, and I forgot his name, forget. Uh, well, just, just, just remember, just remember because it's down here. It's <laughs> Nelson Rodriguez. Uh, Nelson Rodriguez was, uh, was, was, was very, someone who had very strong opinions about many things uh, and, uh, and I do believe that uh, some of the, the ideas that Umberto Eco was uh, expressing his disbelief about um, the way collectives could be, be stupid or could become stupid, it also appeared uh, in some of uh, uh, Nelson Rodriguez saying here, so if anyone speaks other language than uh, Portuguese, uh, the advantage here is that you can get this PDF and have it translated. Th this guy wrote very well, so he was very convincing. He didn't usually have the most politically correct uh, uh, 
perspectives of the world, uh, but, uh, but he was as modern, he had his uh, own points and his own arguments against uh, us simply thinking politically correct all the time. Uh, uh, what else do I have, do we have here? Uh, again, another paper that I included here. Of course, when I started uh, myself uh, trying to understand this collective imbecility, um, I, I had to read whatever I, I could find. So, so there's some more, another paper here, A Legion of Imbeciles, uh, Hyperinformation, Alienation, and Fetishes of the Libertary Technology. This is the name of the paper. This is an academic paper, but it's again only in Portuguese. And for those of you who want to understand how um, collective stupidity plays a role in politics, uh, uh, Kobelars uh, et Ali, and I, I'm one of the co-authors here, uh, we, well, is this in Portuguese? It's saying, uh, well, if, if, I'm not sure if this version here is in Portuguese because the, the title is, is in English already. Let me see if this is the Portuguese version. It's English. It's English. No, no, Portuguese. Ah, but we do have, we do have, uh, Interesting. Yeah, we do have a version of that in English. I'll try to, to include it here also for, for that. Basically, what we, we discuss in this uh, parrot talk, retweeting uh, among Twitter's, uh, Twitter, Twitter's users during the 2018 Brazilian presidential election, we wanted to assess uh, you know, which news or, or, or which tweets were re retweeted and by whom. Uh, and we noticed that the situation was really polarized in, in our Brazilian elections. I think we do have some graph that shows it here. Look, right, this is when we, we track the, 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 you know, who, who, tweet, uh, who, tweeted, who tweeted whose messages after already uh, having an assessment if they were... I, I never liked uh, being one of the authors. I, I claimed that we shouldn't write and shouldn't say right or left wings here. We should say the electors uh, or the, the supporters of, uh, at that stage, Bolsonaro and uh, Haddad, because my understanding is that many voters of Haddad would not vote, again, vote for Haddad at that stage if they had another option than not Bolsonaro. And the same thing happens. Uh, many people that, that uh, uh, voted for, for Bolsonaro would have had a different, uh, would, would not have voted for him if, uh, if the alternative was not what was posed there. But, and, and by the way, I, my, again, this is my, my personal understanding of our politics. These two extremes here, the red and the, 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 the blue here, um, and, and in our case here, the red being the left, let's see, I don't like to call it the left uh, party or whatever, and, and, and here the right uh, parties, uh, coalition or whatever, I don't like to call it that way because I don't think that it's, it's necessarily that what happens, although it, it surely reflects part of the, the, the situation. But uh, one thing that we, we, we notice here is this huge uh, polarization and the fact that people were not even able to read what they were posting uh, it only depended on who had, who, who had tweeted it before, that would make, it, make them retweet. And that meant that they were only being seen by other people that had ideas very similar to, to their own, right? Uh, how did we get to know who was right or who was left here? Uh, we, well, you, you can uh, read the, the paper later if, if, if it's uh, if interesting. This is, this is pretty much a, I would say, a, a, a data, more like a data science uh, approach to, to the collective intelligence or to the collective stupidity of humans uh, in in deciding who their who their leaders are are going to be, um, so it's there. Uh, this we're not going to discuss this either. Uh, so I guess uh, now knowing what we are going to talk about, we can go back straight to 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 Harris uh, 2015. Uh, how a lone hacker shredded the myth of crowdsourcing. Uh, what we have here in this paper uh, is a DARPA context, a DARPA challenge. DARPA was this North American uh, agency uh, connected to, the, to the, the army, to the military, that uh, uh, supports uh, research in, in, and, and supports uh, uh, you know, university students to develop projects that they, may, they think that may, that may help them improve uh, their own work. So they had in 2011, they, uh, sorry, in 2009, I think they had, had a first um, uh, DARPA con uh, contest in which they had hide, uh, they had hidden a uh, number of balloons, large balloons, <coughs> around the United States, and and, uh, and, and then gave um, teams in, the, 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 in this contest the opportunity of saying where those balloons were, right? And in fact, some of the intelligence uh, people there, uh, some, some of the, the people involved with that said that that was an impossible task, but they offered 
uh, $40,000 as a price for someone who could solve that, that problem. And, uh, well, these guys that were led by uh, Manuel Sebrian, uh, who was at that stage at the MIT, but he, he also is connected to the to University of Melbourne, I think, in Australia. Um, uh, they, they solved the problem in a few hours. And basically, what they did, they thought, well, we have $40,000 40, uh, um, uh, as a price. Let's share that among all those who help us um, solve this problem. They actually used a pyramid uh, structure because they wanted to engage as many people as they could. And uh, let's say even, for example, if, Ma if Ma Mateus uh, learned about the context here and, and he was there looking for, 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 for where the balloon could be, but he looked in his block and he found, well, it's not over here. But then he would say, well, I have some $500 friends that I can get involved. What would be his motivation to call everyone into the context? Uh, they, they had this pyramid thing that uh, whoever found the, uh, uh, a balloon would get, uh, I don't recall how many balloons there, there were, I think it was 20 or something like that. But anyway, uh, so for whatever balloon that was, was spotted, uh, uh, the, the prize would be, be, be split between whoever spotted it and, and whoever uh, brought that person into the, let's say, to the network and whoever brought that per person in and so on in a sort of a, um, let's say, a, an assessment. In, in a way that everyone uh, got uh, compensated. So worked like a pyramid, uh, but of course, it was not one of those pyramids that involve uh, a, an, an issue of, uh, of, of, it's not an illegal pyramid because nobody uh, loses anything here. It's not a pyramid that the, the last ones to get in will, will, will pay for everyone else's profit. Here, the profit here is whatever DAR uh, money DARPA had assigned for the, pri for, for, for the price and it would be split among uh, all those uh, people. Well, they sold it rapidly because they, they could uh, involve a large amount of people around the United States to look around their neighborhood or whatever and see, yeah, I, I spotted them. Um, so that was in 2009. This is not the story that is being reported here. Now we are in the 2011 um, contest. And this time, DARPA has gotten a little more sophisticated in, 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 in the challenge. Instead of you know hiding balloons around the country, uh, they they just shredded uh, some documents. In fact, five or six uh, documents in uh, uh, a large uh, number of uh, small pieces, uh, and uh, and then provided those puzzles, let's say, to be solved um, by, by by the team. And whoever did that first would get a prize of fifty thousand uh, dollars. They say that the first puzzle had just a couple hundred shreds. But the, the final one had over 6,000. 6, so, and they were all mixed up together. Uh, no, in fact, I'm not sure if uh, it, it, the paper is not clear about if they were, if the pieces of all different uh, um, documents were mixed together or if, if they were different sets. Probably they were different sets because later uh, 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 Harris reports here that some of the teams were able to, 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 to some, some of the teams were able to. Um, uh, Assemble the first puzzle, the second puzzle, but very few teams uh, uh, got uh, beyond the third puzzle or so. And of course, uh, the idea was the team that was led here by uh, Manuel Sebrian, that uh, guy who had led the team that won in 2009, was one of the teams involved. Some of the problems with uh, their involvement, they, they were a little late. They started, they got into the competition two weeks after it had started. So that means that pro they probably rushed into it and, and could not take all the measures they would otherwise to even reduce the possibility of sabotage. So they, they went into the, and, and they, of course, they were very, again, the methodology that they were using, crowdsourcing, was very effective. And although being two weeks late, very soon they became, they were already second in the contest, right? Uh, they were second. The, the sabotagers team, I think was the 50th or so. Uh, of course, the sabotagers team was working, was trying to use some, uh, uh, optical uh, recognition and uh, so some, some more, let's say, uh, computer, really computer-oriented, uh, 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 let's say, approach, uh, but uh, we're far behind. Again, my understanding from the reading is that so the guys were in 50, they, 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 didn't even, they, they didn't think that they had a chance of winning. They probably didn't sabotage everyone who was ahead of them. They sabotaged this team here because it, the, 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 the sabotager there thought, well, what he's doing is, 
preventing uh, other people with uh, more sophisticated, let's say, computer science ideas to win something simply because we still do not, we, we, we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, in the future we will, but we haven't gotten there yet. That was the, that seemed to be his allegations. Um, so, um, well, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting paper uh, to read. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, of details. Uh, they, they even talk a little bit about when, when the group noticed that they were being sabotaged, they tried to do something, right? They, they, they started, first tried, uh, tried to, to, to figure out who was doing it. They thought that it was a lot of people uh, because uh, it was a lot of damage being done. Uh, but in fact, it turned out that, well, as, as they figured out uh, uh, later, it was just one person or, or maybe a person with, with, with the support of a, another colleague. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, what they say here is that it's much easier to destroy the work of others than, than to develop your own. Uh, of course, they could and should have put some barriers here, right? If they had not been, gotten into the, the, the contest later, uh, if, they had, if they were a little more organized in the way they they could have probably prevented some of the sabotage. And the sabotage that was done there was simple enough, maybe for them to protect against. But the fact is, you have to protect against sabotage, mainly when there is a competition, when, mainly when other people have different goals, different objectives to, to those that are involved in the, in the project. And so uh, one interesting thing that I found here was uh, very large here. It says Stefanovich. Stefanovich was that guy that was was uh, a few years later was the, the French guy. Uh, is this a, a mix up? Uh, it's, 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 it's a guy that four, I think four uh, years later uh, was, was dealing with the data. The, 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 the data scientist, the guy in Abu Dhabi. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's the French guy. Uh, speculates that any Forshan hackers who logged Forshan was the guys that were allegedly invited to help sabotage. So uh, any uh, for Shen hackers who logged on to, to, to wreck uh, Havoc soon got bored. They might have uh, been attackers, but they weren't motivated. So even sabotage probably needs motivation. That's something that we have to think with. We, we need to motivate the participants of our, of our crowdsourcing. But, uh, but if, we, if we were at the other side, and this was a problem that the guy had, he, he, he tried to, to tell people, hey, go there and help me damage their work because they're cheating or whatever he, way he used to, to convince these people. People went there and helped a little bit to, to destroy the work uh, of the, the team in the context, uh, context. But they didn't have enough motivation to be there doing that for hours. While, while, while the, the people that were part of the team, whenever they saw that someone had moved a, a piece out of, of the place where it was already in the right place, they moved it back. And in fact, this was a problem later on because uh, finding a place for a, for a new piece is difficult, but when you see that someone is is destroying what you did, put it back is something you can do, can do as fast as he can uh, as, as the other one can take out. So many people that were actually trying to 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 fix the damage were also in the first approach of local, uh, localizing the the sabotages here. They were also considered as being sabotaged because simply because they were acting fast. But what they were doing is someone was taking a piece of the puzzle out and they were pushing it back, right? But I, I found it interesting that uh, Adam, Adam is the guy who was sabotaging, he, was, he did not have a, a motivation scheme either. So he ended up uh, doing the job alone, which in fact was not difficult for him because the project had not been structured to prevent uh, sabotage. Um, so the, 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 the last bit of the, the paper says, is this the end of crowdsourcing? Right, are we, um, let me see that. Okay, is, is this the end of crowdsourcing? Uh, in Stefanovic's and Sebrian's uh, paper, this is the paper that I just included this morning, right? Uh, they conclude the real impact of the attack was not to destroy the sample piece, but to destroy the user base of the platform and to disrupt the recruitment dynamics. So notice that, in fact, what they realize here is that the problem was not that the puzzle itself was being, uh, 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 the, the, let's say, uh, broken or, or put apart. It was that the sabotagers were being able to, to, to destroy the self-esteem of the team. 
So when you have an organized team and they're, they're, oh, they're putting their work to do something and then they suddenly do that, they work and work and work, but the project does not go ahead because there's sabotage at the other end, that, what, that is, is, is much more uh, damaging to the process than the actual dam damage that is performed because you may not be able to, you may, you may lose you know, the participants, you may lose those that were motivated to participate and you may not be able to hire uh, others. In fact, it says that uh, all the motivation generated by weeks of good uh, uh, PR, a fun task and a smart financial incentive scheme evaporated in the face of attacks by a single person lasting in total no more than a couple of hours. The researchers, uh, researchers warned, our results raise caution in the application of crowdsourced problem solving for sensitive tasks involving financial targets and national security. Notice that the, 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 the guys in the team and this, uh, uh, and this uh, Stefano Vich, who was, let's say, included in the team, not, not in the team, the contest team, but in, in, in the team, the research team later to try to understand how the, the hacking had happened, uh, they said, you know, if we're thinking about something that's uh, or, or, or a problem that may that that, that may be uh, interests going the other way, maybe crowdsourcing won't work, and that's where they caused um, um, this this, this uh, statement at the, the end of their their of their paper here, which shows some. Um, how could I say that? Uh, so, so disappointments with the perspectives of crowdsourcing, that is what uh, our other author here, uh, Harper, is going to challenge in his, uh, I don't know if I, I should call that a paper, but on his, it, it seems like more, more like a, a post on a, on a forum or something, right? Uh, but uh, he says, no, uh, of course we can use, even in, in situations like those involving, uh, uh, you know, monetary interests or involving uh, national security uh, uh, problems. We just have to uh, uh, make sure that we include the rights, um, let's say, uh, safeguards uh, in, our, in our projects. And so let's go uh, then to, to, to Harper's, uh, again, I, I don't know if I call this a paper, uh, because it's, it's a, uh, it is a paper, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it's a, it seems like uh, something that, the, the way he wrote I, is, is the way that I would write on a forum or something like that. It's not, it's not so structured as a, a, as a, a paper, even considering that this is a, let's say, a, a back channel was, uh, is, is this isn't really a back channel. Back channel is sort of a, an online, uh, I think it's an online magazine or something yeah. like that. Okay. So, so equivalent to medium, it's a blogging or text publishing. Yeah. So, um, uh, but, but I found it, I, I, I find many for those of you who are, who want to be practically involved with collective intelligence, who want to actually develop projects and need to be cautious about the possibilities of sabotage and need to prevent sabotage from happening, I thought that this, uh, the advice that we get here from, uh, from uh, this uh, guy who had been the, the CTO uh, for Threadless from 2005 to 2009, very interesting. Um, so he says, uh, uh, first of all, he, he, he claims that uh, that the, the the approach that had been used in the shredded uh, contest uh, was unsophisticated, an unsophisticated <coughs> approach uh, to a sophisticated problem, right? And uh, and he says it's it's a problem of online community. Uh, in fact, the sabotagers there destroyed the community. They didn't destroy the the puzzle itself. They destroyed that community. Uh, engagement in continuing to do things. They, 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 they put down the, the morale of the team. Uh, so he says, crowdsourcing is not about the work itself. Crowdsourcing is about community. Without a solid community, you get, uh, you get not solid results from your crowdsourcing endeavor. We're thinking here of someone who, remember, if you remember Threadless, Threadless was that um, company that built a, a t-shirt business uh, in which Customers were involved in all stages, co-creation, uh, 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 sorry, crowd creation and, and co-creation, co-creation of, of the products, uh, and then uh, the support to, 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 all, to, to quality assessment. Everything in, in, in Threadless was done with the help of a community. Uh, the company treated its customers, not as customers, but as a community. They were building something together. Uh, and, but of course, they wanted that community to, to keep its eyes open to people that had, let's say, misaligned interests. Right? 
But the, the reasons why he thought that the, the, the group here was, uh, was not, we used an unsophisticated approach, was that, well, they first they started late, uh, then uh, they were attacked and then they were frustrated and burnt out. Burned out because they were trying to redo something that others were destroying. All these things create a terrible experience for the community, which in turn will not participate in a positive way. Uh, and then he starts uh, giving us uh, access to some, what he calls, techniques to defeat annoying people in, in your community. Uh, by the way, he claims that, there's always, that there are always uh, um, people that are there trying to, to, to defeat, yeah, uh, sorry, sorry, trying to, 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 to cheat and, and trying to, to do things that go against what you plan. And by the way, uh, um, in the previous uh, paper, uh, the, 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 the uh, Serbian, right, that's what we call his name, Manuel, the, the guy who was the leader of the group, Manuel Severian, Severian, Severian knew that uh, they should have some measures against uh, sabotage because in the, the previous context, the one that they won in 2009, the one about the balloons, they had had, for example, several people reporting fake balloons, right? They, they even, uh, with, with some Photoshop uh, editions that were much better than whatever Adam did afterwards as uh, sabotage. So, so there was also sabotage. They also needed to check many things. But in fact, there, they had planned better and they, and they did it in the second uh, competition, they, they, they were less, let's say, prepared uh, for it. Um, so uh, the goals of many of the, the tactics that, that uh, here the CTO of Threadless is going to say is not to stop assholes from being assholes. That, that's, that's what he says here. Just to slow them down and demotivate them from destroying your community. So instead of having the sabotagers destroy your, your community, you have to figure out ways of destroy, destroying their, uh, uh, not, not their ability to do it, but their motivation to do it. Um, and then I suggest a couple of, uh, of things. First, he says, the best path, let's see, let's see if I find it here. So the best path is always to, to, to tell your bad actor that being bad is not accepted, uh, acceptable behavior. Simple, don't be a jerk, is surprisingly effective. Right? Of course, here he's telling us this based on his experience uh, at Redness. Uh, another interesting advice, uh, well, well, they have a list of them, but, but for example, another one that caused, uh, caught my attention is harsh actions such as banning or freezing an account should be your last resort. And why so? Why simply banning someone who's sabotaging or freezing an account is not effective? People create another account, right? So don't challenge those who are trying to sabotage you. Uh, because if you challenge them, they, that may provide them with the motivation they need, right? So you have to try and demotivate them. And how you do them? Uh, how can you, can you do that? Probably making them perceive they're not being effective so that they, so that they would, will need a lot more work to destroy what you're doing uh, than they are, they are willing to, to, to put into. Um, Enabling, uh, enable, uh, enabling your community to help you is the best bet. How can you do that? How can you enable your community to help you find uh, or, or, or play against sabotage? That was the tagging. Uh, that's the, yeah. That's you, 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 you can say, and it's not something that the, the sabotager itself should see, but anyone in the group could say, I, I feel that this guy here is doing something weird. You just tag it. Remember, we've already talked about folksonomy. Uh, and, and allowing people to tag things, just tag weird action or whatever, because that at least helps uh, people that, are, that, let's say, people in the company thinking that we're, we're talking about the, the open source, the, 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 the cross source sees, right? The people that are doing the work, but there's some people in the, in, inside, the, the, inside the team that can then go directly there and check what's happening. Uh, and then the, the suggestion is don't just ban, because this is what they did. They started banning, they first banned, um, let's say, uh, the email. Then, of course, this guy generated other emails, and they noticed that the, uh, the other emails came from the same IP, <coughs> so they banned the IP, and then uh, suddenly the guy was using uh, a, some, some uh, v, uh, a VPN to, 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 to connect from a different co continent, uh, allegedly. So, uh, I mean, they, they were just giving him a further incentive, because he was finding it interesting to battle against, mainly noticing that they were being so 
unsophisticated in the way that they were treating. Yeah. Mm, it's the engagement, right? Uh, you do an action, you get a response, mm -hmm. so you wait for so, the so, end, so and, and you feel that you feel that you're causing troubles, right? <laughs> uh, the best thing is you, 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 you do something to sabotage and you see nothing happened. Nobody even noticed. That is demoralizing. That that put, puts you down. Right? Yeah, and there is the kids that they use about the flagging that the content that the, the person who is publishing thinks that it's being published and has no rule, but the other people that lose in that, uh, that community don't see that content, so they are not like uh, affected by it. Exactly. So the person that wants to disrupt just keeps attacking, but no one gets attacked because yeah. it's restricted. Yeah, and even he or she even thinks that it's being effective, but he's doing that yeah. in his own uh, his own version. We create a separate world for, for him to play. Yeah, yeah. This will appear here. So first, see again that advice. Uh, again, the, 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 the let's see the, the the language that is used here is, is, is pretty much a blog language. So don't piss off, right? Pissed off people have infinitely more energy, infinitely more energy, because they, you know, that that, that provides them with reasons to keep keep going. Uh, so, um, but then he gets to these techniques that he finds uh, useful uh, to to go against the sabotages. So, the first one is this not in public site or, uh, or, or search areas, right? Never allow people to, to work directly on, in, in the, the front, let's say, in something that will, will show up to everyone else. So limiting access to specific areas of the app may provide you with more control <coughs> sorry, of what uh, is actually happening. Another thing here, all users, uh, all new users, uh, are on probation and only have access to X features until they do Y. So, for example, if they had their situation, no one can is allowed to take uh, one one piece out before having included uh, some correct five pieces. Okay, that could be a a, a way of uh, or of, of, of making sure that or no one will be allowed to do a, a more uh, radical. Um, um, Contributions such as dragging several pieces at the same time, after uh, others have tagged it as, as as a good contributor for a couple of days or so, that would you know some simple arrangements uh, could have already helped a lot. Again, the problem, the main problem here was they were late, they were in a rush, they they didn't prepare for for they didn't think that sabotage could be a problem, or or if they did, they uh, actually in the previous contest they had they, problems they had. with. Uh, like other types of sabotage, so they were aware and they... They didn't have time. They probably didn't have time. They, were, they, they got laid into it. They, they were not well organized. I mean, we have, if we want to explore collective intelligence, and mainly if we want to explore collective intelligence to our intents, right, not, and, and our intents are, are, are only aligned with the, the, the other user's intent, uh, or, or the, let's say the crowdsourcee's crowd intents in the short run, we have to take a lot of measures to make sure that they do not act against our interest. Let's see what uh, he says here about flagging. Right? Allowing a community to moderate bad actors uh, in some way is really helpful. It would allow you to jumpstart the process of deciding a bad, uh, a bad, a bad actor is in fact bad. Uh, uh, we see uh, these words all over the internet. Mark as spam, flag this content. When, when, whenever we have this, Mark a spam flag like this content. This, these are all situations in which uh, companies are using collective intelligence to help keep whatever material, wh whatever content they, 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 they show us, um, good for the majority of the people. Right? They, they're using collective intelligence there, right? Asking people to mark something, a spam uh, flag uh, content. For example, when Google, um, uh, when, when Gmail uh, asked me to confirm if something that they think that is spam, spam is spam, I am being used as a cross or C. I am helping uh, their, their, let's say, their algorithms get better on selecting what is indeed uh, spam and what isn't. Because if I say this is not spam, this will probably help their, their algorithm to understand, well, maybe some other situations like this, I shouldn't consider it as spam in the future. Not only for me, for, for other people as well. We are helping to train their algorithms in uh, becoming smarter in deciding if it's spam or not. Uh, another uh, interesting approach here is uh, what uh, he calls service slowdown. If if someone is flagged as a as a as a bad guy, instead of uh, you know blocking his or her access, 
slow him or her down. Uh, make sure that they, they have a bad experience. Bad experience in the sense, not that they, they make sure that they have a bad experience, that they, they do not claim that it's, it's being bad because you, uh, because you are putting them down, because that could annoy them. Make them think that that happens to everyone and, and, and that your service is, is simply bad for everyone. Uh, your app performs <coughs> should perform poorly uh, once a person is marked as annoying. Yeah, he, he, again, he, it says that an angry had, had said before a pissed off person. An angry person has way more energy. Don't provide them with with this motivation. You should motivate those that are supporting you, not those that are going against you. Another advice: hide the bad actor from the population. This is what Mateus had already said. Well, create an environment for himself and he will be, he will believe that he's causing problems to everyone, but in fact he's only managing to, to, to affect his own environment. Uh, however, just make, make the bad actors, ma uh, however, uh, just say, I always had a lot of fun, uh, so you say, I always had a lot of fun uh, with this one. It can, however, just make the bad actors mad and give them uh, something to, to defeat. Again, think, don't motivate the uh, sabotage. So if you're going to do that, do it in a way that it either takes very long for them to realize that that's happening, and then you have already progressed a lot with your, your, your work, uh, or if it's possible to, to make sure that he will never, uh, he will never perceive that, that's even better. Uh, uh, you can... Uh, well, related to, to slowing down as well, you can uh, generate a, 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 what, what he calls here rate limiting. Sorry, uh, you could drop their ability to make requests. Uh, and an important one in this case, in, in, in the case of the, 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 shred, uh, the shredding competition, contagion. Uh, you want to be able easily and quickly understand the footprint of a bad actor. Especially, you want to know how many uh, other accounts they have and which accounts they're using to attack your application. One of the suggestions he gives here is that maybe when, when someone is flagged uh, as a potential uh, bad guy, uh, you just include uh, some, some, let's say, uh, you, you just include the flag there also uh, in, his, uh, in his computer. You, 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 you keep it. Uh, you keep, keep his his machine tags so that whenever uh, something else comes from that machine, you already associate it to the same to the same uh, person. So at the end, he says, "Well, you may you may not be able to defeat a sophisticated attack, but at least the sophisticated attacks will slow or stop." Uh, in any again, in any situation involving uh, computers, we do need to to think of how to protect against people that have different interests to, to ourselves. So again, uh, 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 the claim here is, no, it's not the end of crowdsourcing. Uh, it's just that crowdsourcing has to be done, not in a naive uh, way that believes that those who want to support you will be there, and those who are not interested will simply be out. Uh, they may be there to, to prevent you from, from uh, achieving the results you, you, you wish to have. So, so again, to sabotage. Right? Um, OK, so that's. Uh, that, that's this response. I, I find this very practical. I, I think there's some good ideas here. It's a very short uh, uh, paper or whatever we call it, uh, blog entry or whatever, but, but it has some good advice. Do not annoy sabotagers, uh, but try to keep them aside or try to slow the damage that they can create so that your team can work well and so that your team does not get its own self-esteem down because of the work of the, of the sabotagers. Right? Um, and then uh, uh, let, let's get into to, 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 to Paquet uh, 2001 here as our last paper for the day. Again, I said, well, this, this is a little too focused uh, on specific issues of the Canadian uh, politics and culture, uh, but some insights uh, on how the internet changed or, or changed the world from a top down structure to a bottom up. Uh, basically, what he's saying is. Traditionally, we we had uh, well, governments and, and, and the way our our society works uh, involved top-down decisions. We now have this opportunity of having bottom-up uh, uh, 
emergent uh, decisions being taken, but for that we have to turn uh, citizens in, in, in active citizens, not just passive citizens. In fact, I don't believe that passive citizens exist. We, if we're passive as citizens, we're not citizens, we're just consumers of uh, government, government uh, services. Uh, technology now allows us to all get more involved uh, and hopefully our, our governments will understand that and will find ways of including us all in, in, in we should call it in government processes, in citizenship processes. Uh, but this will involve um, solving or, or reducing the disturbance that happens when you have uh, different points of view um, uh, contrasting each other, right? The author's argument, and I said at the beginning of the class, with which I, s I agree to some extent, uh, again, I, I feel that I, am, uh, I try to be as, uh, as responsible a person as I can with uh, respect to making sure that I respect the other, uh, that I pay attention to, to the other, to, to, to other people and, and know what their rights are, uh, and even if, if it's not a stated rights, know if uh, I would wish that others treated me the way I'm treating them. So I'm very, I think I'm very conscious of, of, of how I should behave uh, in society. Uh, but at the same time, times I, 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 I feel that sometimes by trying to do what we believe that is right and imposing that, we, we do that in a way that we impose that to others, and maybe others are not necessarily uh, uh, as prepared to that that sort of imposition. So I agree with, with an underlying idea here that says, you know, uh, the, all this movement for the politi uh, political correctness uh, is doing more harm than good. I feel, I personally feel like that, you know, that because we, it's not that we are making other people understand that they should be behave differently. It's only that we're saying you're prohibited to, to do things differently. And when we do that, okay, we may be able to to prohibit them uh, from from acting differently to what we expect, to the way we expect that they, they could uh, could and should behave, uh, but they will do that for imposition, and they will only do that until they they can get organized, or and if they if they realize that they are if they realize that they are they're they're, they're jerks, uh, uh, they, they they may be quiet, but when they realize that jerks are a majority, or at least that they are, that they can also be a, a let's say a a loud minority because many, many of the in many of the cases also when we're doing we're promoting the politically correct we're promoting the politically correct from the perspective of including what i'll call here don't get me i apologize for it but loud minorities when the jerks become loud mi minorities again uh we we get into a situation that there is no possibility of debate discussion because each one is trying to impose their own ideas um, and that's the case where Democracy, instead of becoming the, the accommodation of different interests, become becomes the dictatorship of the majority of of the term, right? Of whoever uh, uh, has won an election, for example. Uh, so, in that sense, I I, I think that's a uh, uh, Paquet. Although, again, although I don't, do not agree uh, in the detail to some of uh, his ideas, I, I do uh, agree with this idea that we should not shut up those who think differently to us. We should not turn that into crying. Uh, I mean, necessarily what they they say. We should. It, it, it's important that we, we understand what the, the way they think, so that we can even uh, argue against it. Uh, if we just try to shut them up, it's just a matter uh, of uh, uh, pushing them uh, to, to their own bubbles, where they will not shut, and where that cooking pan, the, 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 sorry, that pressure pan, will uh, one day explode because they will at, at some time realize that uh, they are right and the rest of the world is wrong, uh, which is not very different to what happened when we say we are right and the rest of the world is wrong. Um, so it's, uh, uh, it goes back uh, to, to a topic that we have already discussed, the possibility of using uh, collective intelligence for, for governments, uh, but it provides this idea that it's, 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 it's almost like we govern that we discussed before, uh, but we have to understand that, that this we is not we against them, it's we, we all of us, uh, regardless of uh, the differences in thoughts that we have. So governance becomes an important word here, because governance means, I'm not sure if I can, I, I wanted to highlight governance here, but governance 
means uh, making sure that we can uh, live with the disturbances, that we can live with the differences, that we can, and, and that, that we, can, we can even build something larger from the differences than we would if we all thought the same. Right? Um, well, I, I, I think uh, this is what I, I, I wanted to say about this, uh, this papers that we had for today. Um, I know that some of, some of you were asking me during the week, in the week is this our last class? And uh, maybe to, to the surprise of some, I would say, yes, this is our last class. <laughs> we, the, 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 the planning of this course is having uh, 10 sessions uh, in which we discussed, well, I, I can't say that it's 10 different topics, we were discussing the same thing uh, all over, but the idea was providing with, with you with an opportunity to reflect on the possibility of involving humans uh, and involving, involving large numbers of humans to perform little tasks or to get engaged in large tasks uh, in which they, they do, uh, well, they coordinate whatever they do with others uh, and, and achieving uh, our goals. Uh, I know and I, I realize that most of you in this class are not collective intelligence researchers, so you're not necessarily, your topic of research is not collective intelligence, but I hope that this course here has given you some insights on how you can use uh, some of these ideas, some are just ideas, <coughs> some of these techniques uh, in order to achieve the goals of your own research or in, in order to achieve the goals of your own projects, more practical projects. Okay? Uh, and for me to assess that, uh, in addition to, of course, we, we have all our participations in the, in the forums that you, you've, you've done over the, the semester, uh, and, and, and I'm very keen uh, to, uh, I really liked having had that because it gives us the opportunity of, of really exercise our collective intelligence in the, in the sense that each one of us has a different understanding of what we read or even of what I, or my interpretation of my own reading here. Um, so that provides us with an opportunity of different perspectives there. So I, I, I think the participation in the forum is, is rich. Besides, it allows for those of you who are not as fluent in English as you, you would wish uh, to still participate because you can always, there's time for you to think and, and, and write and maybe even get some, some support from some technological tools to, to help with that. So all of that is, is, is fine. But now, uh, as a final project for this course, I will, um, uh, you, you have, a, let's say, your final task is going to, 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 to be to write, to write something. Uh, it's not a paper, it's not, uh, it's not structured, you can structure it the way you wish, right? Uh, but to write, let's say, a, 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 to write your ideas in a, uh, in a document that should not be longer than five pages, so five pages at the most, I just want to, it's, it's, it's the ideas that come to your mind on how you can use uh, whatever you learned in this course, whatever techniques you, you were able to, to reflect about in this course, uh, to, to incorporate into your own research or your own projects uh, in the future. Right? So this is going to be our final uh, task. Uh, although it's a simple task, it's a task that I, that I think you can do. I mean, for, for those of you who, who did the, the, the reading seriously, and uh, it's something that will probably take you not more than maybe another four hours or so, so another, another Friday morning. Uh, my plan is to give you until the end of June to do that. So, um, and, and, and again, it's not. Don't think that it's because I think it's the work of a month, right? It's just that I know that uh, some of you will be able to do it straight away. Some will need a little more time to even to reflect on the or reread some of the, the text that you read, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, another thing that I would uh, like you to do in writing this uh, this manuscripts, this, this text of yours, is that you highlight, uh, uh, also maybe you can spare just half a page for that, right? Or a page at the most for that, highlight the three readings that affected you the most and, 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 and the reasons for that, right? From, from all the papers that you read, uh, what were the three that called, I, I will write this down, uh, just uh, of course we will, after the break here, after the break, we'll get to our forum to, our forum to discuss the papers for today, right? And while you're doing that, I will write that down and, and make sure that uh, you have even a place where you will post um, your, 
your contributions until the end of, uh, of June, okay? But it's, but I want one, let's say, one page at the most of those five pages, or maybe it, it could even be an extra page. Well, uh, let's go like that. You, you have five pages to, to write about the, the you know, how, how you think that uh, this course effect, effect or could affect the projects that you're working on. Uh, and, then, um, and then you have an extra page to tell me what were the three most impactful papers uh, from those that you you had to read because they were they were I mean as, as assignments for, for for each class or maybe for uh, among those that you found in the anywhere in the in the in the let's say here in our Moodle page so uh, could be there in, I mean we, we have those wiki parts we didn't explore as much but uh, or we didn't explore collectively but hopefully some of you did more individually so if it's not a paper that we directly discuss here but being anything that is in our Moodle, it, it, is, uh, it, it is something that you, you could discuss there, okay? All right, so I uh, don't know if uh, any, any questions with respect to the, to, 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 to the project or, or... Yeah, go on, Pedro. Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to, to hopefully, well, we never know about the infrastructure of uh, UTFPR, uh, but hopefully you will be able to, to assess the, this course forever, right? When, uh, 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 until something happens and uh, I, I never kick anyone out of the course, uh, what will, will happen? I, I don't even know if Moodle keeps sending you any, any info when, uh, when, when someone includes something there or not. But I, I, you've noticed that I use exactly the same place here for, for you now and, 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 and students from previous years. They, they can still, if, I mean, they will not be collaborating. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they do, you know how they do it. Uh, so collective intelligence keeps happening because, but it usually doesn't have a, happen inside the Moodle. It happens in our WhatsApp group, you know. I, I never, I never kill the, those groups either. Of course, there are groups that tend to be silent for quite a while uh, because we're not, as we're not having classes any longer. There's not, nothing, but sometimes I see, you know, someone there says, oh, look, this is something we saw in our class two years ago. Uh, and then they, 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 they tell that their little group, I don't include un unless uh, it's something that I think that could be of interest of everyone else. I, I, I don't keep copying it to the other groups, right? But I usually, if, if it's something that I find that may be uh, interesting to, to others, I include in the Moodle. So if sometimes it's a, some reference material or whatever. And sometimes if, if it's something really that I think that is, would really be, be to the interest of everyone, I, I, I copy to the other group. So again, uh, I, I know that each one, uh, manages their, uh, their watch, WhatsApp groups the way they do. I know that it's overwhelming. Uh, I, in, in fact, I, have, I, I only have WhatsApp groups with my students and my ex-students. I never kill any of the, those groups, but I never, I, I mean, I only get back to them when there is something important. Uh, uh, so if you, if, you, if you don't kill it, just silence it or keep it there. It will probably, and this is something that I always prefer that way. It's, it's good that it's, uh, it's, it's not a group for people to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and, and sharing pictures of, of their, their, their pets. It's a group where when we do think that they're all, this may interest the others, we include it there. And if people over time are not interested, I mean, if, uh, I, sometimes I notice that after a year someone includes something and it is about, uh, it is about uh, collective intelligence, and then I notice that after that guy included that, someone else gets out of the group. There's no problem with that, you know. Uh, I mean, you don't have to be there forever, but I would say you will probably get, my experience here has been these WhatsApp groups after the, the uh, after the, the class is, is over, uh, there will be one message every semester or so. So I, I would even silence them. I would keep them there. And of course, if, if, we, if we see that anyone is doing that, uh, is using the group to, to uh, in, in, a, in a way that they shouldn't, then we'll kick that person out and keep it silent there for everyone else if you want to use it in, in the future. Okay. All right. Any, but any, any, any. So, so. Uh, be sure that uh, the material is going to be uh, available there. One thing that may happen is that we may have to change the. When I said that it will be there forever, these courses may have. I, I may have to migrate them from. They usually use the the, the academic department of uh, informatics here infrastructure, uh, and this infrastructure we don't have support to it any longer. Right. So that means that whenever uh, Moodle goes down, it goes down until one of uh, one of the professors here tries to go there and hack and, and, and figure out what's happening. So we may have to change, to migrate this program, uh, to the, this course, to the, the university's um, uh, Moodle platform uh, somewhere, and that, that may happen next semester. Uh, if I, but if I move it there, 
uh, I, I usually move with, I, I try to, to uh, what I'll do is I will, uh, um, I'll just try to mirror it there. Of course, you have, you'll need a different password or whatever, but the course is going to be there. Your, your, all your interventions will, hope, will hopefully be there and all the material will be there. All right, so we'll be back in, in 20 minutes for, for our, our forum. And while we'll be working on the, on the forum, uh, discussing your impressions about this, what you read for today, uh, I will be formally including this final project. But again, I think it's my expectation that it's something that you write in whatever time you need to write uh, a five-page. Uh, uh, so I, I'd say that if you focus there for a few hours, uh, that, that's not enough. I'm not giving you a month because I want you to do a one-month work, right? Uh, and besides, I know that some of you are already working on, on, on something that involves collective intelligence, so it, it's going to almost be a, a, a just putting it in more, it, it can be in a more, more, more blog format, it can be something closer to what, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Harper, Harper does, it. It's, you, you, you can use informal language, don't, don't, don't worry about, of course, uh, if you need to cite something, cite it the, the proper way, but don't, uh, this is not a, a text that you're going to publish, right, so, it's for me to understand how impactful this is, uh, or, or, or it's, it's collective intelligence happening here. It's my, it's, at the same time, it's my, my feedback. Of course, I, I, I will be able to understand what you were able to, to, to gain from the course, but at the same time, uh, it will provide me with an insight of what is calling more attention, what uh, maybe I should uh, throw away. Uh, well, I, I won't know. Maybe that just gave me another idea. In a I, I'll make it a little longer. <laughs> I'll include uh, also, well, you we have uh, uh, five pages for, for, for your reflection, or right, for, for your, then one page for the three best papers, and why not one page for those three that you would want me to take away, right? Because if there are many, many of you say, well, I didn't like that one, good, uh, but, but give me some reasons also, right? Okay, uh, it's, it's a good reflection. Uh, it's, it's always good to, for us to think of the things that we, we liked the, and helped us. The things that we didn't like for whatever reason, maybe it's repetitive, or maybe, um, uh, or maybe I sim we simply didn't like, or maybe it was confusing. Okay, but I will write that down. Okay, so see you in in 20 minutes uh, there in our forum.